Hi, I'm Banana. And I'm Kim from Be Ellen Chill. And we have a very special guest with us today. It is Kim Goodburn, Mr. International himself. Hello, guys. Hello, guys. How are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, if it, and if for all the BL fans out here, you probably recognize him from the series I Feel You Linger in the Air, where he was the White Knight character, James. Mm. Yes, that's me. And actually, uh, some of you BL lovers might actually recognize me from an earlier, earlier project called Bad Buddy. Bad Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. Like, I know him. I know him. And then the fact that she was able to pull that from her memory, we were like... <laughs> Yeah, when we watched, uh, when we first started watching I Feel You Linger in the Air and you came on, I was like, I swear he was in that movie. <laughs> I, was like, I don't even know why I know faces this well. But yeah, my face actually changed a little bit from uh, Bad Buddy to I Feel You Linger in the Air. I think I gained a little bit of weight, yeah. <laughs> I think it was just a few years you grew up a little, right? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, time flies. <laughs> well um i'm sure that you know this but i feel you linger in the air was a really really popular series and it was actually a little difficult for international fans to access so i feel mm -hmm. like in our experience uh i mean people were <laughs> like for instance us downloading vpns in order to get access so that we could watch it you know from like straight from thailand and i uh in watching the series uh honestly i loved your character and i wanted so much for your character and at the end i felt such a lack of closure <laughs> because i didn't get to see a happy ending yeah you were literally you were literally like the white knight character you showed up to help people out and then like your story just didn't i was like ah! get anything out of it like <laughs> no but i just think that that was kind of like the beauty of the character really you know and being the white knight i think that was Basically, the whole char characteristic of Mr. James was being able to help others, being empathetic, but meanwhile, not really wanting anything back for himself. But it's just, you know, his past experience making that lesson within him. You know, he just wants the people he loves to be happy rather than, you know, actually wanting himself to be happy. I think that's just the key part of Mr. James and who he really is. The heart of him which is i feel why we were all it's very true but i do feel like that is why we were all so heartbroken at the end and actually i didn't know if there was a chance that uh james's story was going to be continued in the special or maybe um in season two uh so i i had kind of gone looking around because i i wanted to see she is clinging to hope <laughs> I, yeah I, I was so interested i was so invested in your, in your character storyline and uh from there though i i kind of ended up learning more about Kim Goodburn and how amazing your life is. Yeah, you what? have accomplished so much. I mean, it was crazy. I felt like after I read everything, I was thinking I need like a sign in my room that's like, what would the other Kim do? <laughs> just like a daily like reminder just to yeah, get up and do yeah. something. <laughs> Don't feel like going to the gym? What would the other Kim do? He would go to the gym. Okay. <laughs> And on that note, puts the phone away. <laughs> gets out of bed. But in relationship to that, I think that uh, uh, a lot of the questions that we kind of have today are a little bit about your experience in acting, but also kind of about just your life experience in general, since you honestly, I, I feel like I'm going to say this a thousand times today, but you have done and are doing just incredible things. And we are so excited to talk with you and like learn more about your life experience yes i'm and i'm ready to share them with you guys <laughs> <laughs> and on that note the first, first question, question which is very important <laughs> it is very important what's your okay. favorite anime <laughs> favorite anime you know i actually saw this question and i was like going through the list and I was like, oh, there's so many uh growing up I loved Reborn. I'm not sure if you guys know. Oh Reborn. my gosh! Yes, hang on, hang on. Where is his favorite? Oh. Hey, that's I it. love Hitman Reborn. I yes. love it, and I can no longer find the manga here in the states. It doesn't you exist. Can't? 
legally. Really? No way. Yeah. Yeah. The series is still streaming on Crunchyroll, but the manga has been taken off of um, Mm. Shonen Jump. Yeah, every time there's a shooting oh, wow. star, she's like, please let them remake yeah, Reborn. They need to remake it. It was so popular here when it was airing, but then it ended and everyone moved on and I was left behind. <laughs> yeah, because for me, I was watching it during my summer holidays in, in Thailand and it was back in the days of anime being on YouTube. Oh, I was been oh. watching, I think, 100 episodes during that whole summer holiday. Wow. Like every morning I'd watch it and then I'd stay up until 2 a.m. in the morning just to watch it. <laughs> I'd wake up again and I'm like, I need to watch it, I need to watch it. So I, yeah, it was my childhood watching Reborn. But then obviously now I you know, love um, Demon Hunter and other animes as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, it's so funny because there are so many really, I mean, obviously there's so many good shows in general. And these days I feel like the quality of anime has improved so much. But I think mm-hmm. some shows like Reborn, you can just go back because they're so good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they may not it's have so like all good. of the newest graphics, but I mean, mm-hmm. it, after that first season, it got really good. They were like, oh, it's a good one. We should probably invest <laughs> money into it. <That> is- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think it lasted for like, what, 100 something episodes or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for having Hopefully more, hopefully more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, listen, if they can remake One Piece while it's still airing, there's hope, th- there's hope for Hitman Reborn. <laughs> <laughs> always, there's always hope. Just gonna uh, all right. So in relationship, uh, a little bit <laughs> to I feel you mm-hmm. like here. Uh, if yeah. you could live in any time period, which one would you choose to live in? This is difficult. It's a... Uh... It's a toss up between the 70s and the 80s. Oh, okay. Okay, the 70s and 80s. Yes. Are better, though. That's a, that's, a, <sighs> that's a fair point. <laughs> it's going to be America. I want to be in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cuz I'm I'm a huge fan of funk and disco music. Mm. So, you know, being in that disco era, oh, that's going to be a dream and you know, 80s as well, because I was born and raised with rock and roll music. My dad's a musician, and I am I myself am a mu- musician as well. So, like, uh, you know, rock and roll, heavy metal, 80s is like the main era of rock and roll. You have Guns N' Roses, Bon Jovi, you know, all the huge bands coming out to then, and, you know, Queen as well. You know, who doesn't want to see Queen? You, if you ever yeah. come to Vegas, we have so many 80s bands, like, the tribute bands and then mm-hmm. a lot of the bands kind of make returns they come here to vegas yeah <laughs> you don't Concerts. even need to go to a different era <laughs> you have to come to vegas <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah because i've actually heard journey plays regularly in las vegas oh right? yeah yep yeah so yeah. um you know, i gotta pop by to america <laughs> just pop by sure. <laughs> just out of curiosity what instruments do you play I mainly play drums, but I, I can play like bits of guitar and bass and a tiny bit of like piano. But mainly my main instrument is drums. That's yeah, exciting. Drum You're just like well rounded <laughs> and everything, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no 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 I mean my, my parents just pushed me towards many many different things so I kind of like picked up and I think I'm a quick learner as well so that helps me with that, like, with everything in life I think so yeah and that's why I'm you know I've dabbled in many many Dabble things everything. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. try it yeah <laughs> that's so cool yeah exactly when you were a kid what did you want to be when you grew up considering now you do so much yeah <laughs> <laughs> everything <laughs> when I was a kid I dreamt of being a rock star or either like a very, very famous athlete. That was when I was two, three years old. But then when I became more realistic, I was like, okay, maybe that's a little bit too far-fetched. <laughs> um, I'll become a pilot instead. And that was my dream for a little while because my parents were like, oh, Kim, if you become a pilot, we can actually go on free trips with you. <laughs> and <we'll make> a- <laughs> I was like, that, that's not too bad. Then, yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> but then, you know, after a while growing up, then you know, I was like, the athlete actually came back in me. And I was like, oh, I want to be an athlete. But then that kind of, kind of faded away slowly because of injuries and other commitments that I had to pursue, whether that's studying and the entertainment industry. Yeah, so things change. But I think in the end, 
who knows? I still might become a rock star. <laughs> I was going to say, I think the door's still open. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah, I wouldn't say it's too far-fetched now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel, yeah, especially in the BL industry, it's like, I see, you see a lot of the actors suddenly hosting concerts. So yeah, exactly. you're definitely exactly. on the right path. <laughs> yeah, you're already playing um, profession. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Yeah, think of that. It's actually not too unrealistic. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Maybe I I'll star in one of the VR series, and then who knows? I'll have my own concert. Yeah, I'll touch wood, touch wood, touch wood, touch wood. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I'll have my cell phone light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll get to sing the next OST, and oh, yeah. just from there, take off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, not a bad plan. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what are uh, some other accomplishments or talents that you have that maybe your fans might not know about? I feel like the drums was one. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't. I mean, yeah, I didn't know about the drums. It's so cool. Honestly, I mean, yeah, I play music. I play sports. I was actually playing for Thailand for a little bit, playing rugby. Wow. Um, that. Some people might not know I code. I I graduated doing computer engineering, so mm. that's one thing. That's Anything hard. else, really? <laughs> yeah, it it is difficult. I've kind of given it up now because I don't really have any more time to keep up with all the coding and oh, all yeah, the development yeah. and yeah. The technology as well. So I've you know not really focused on that anymore. But I think that's about it. I think that's about it. Yeah. yeah all cool things yeah dang yeah, yeah. <laughs> so talented i'm gonna leave this and be like what am i doing with my life <laughs> get it together <laughs> what would the other kim do what would the other kim do? like <laughs> <laughs> um all right so as we mentioned earlier you are mr international 2023 how did yeah. it feel when they announced that you were the winner like in that moment oh. like, i'm sure like you, you made it to the finals and whatnot and so there's that hope but like I mean, it was unreal. It was an unreal feeling because it was the first time being hosted in Thailand. And Thai people have this kind of idea that it does not look good to win at home because then there's like, oh, it's a cooking show. People, Other people are going to worry about like, is it fixed? You oh, know, okay. are the judges all Thai? There's always going to be questions ar okay. arising from that, right? Yeah. So I was so worried that I was not going to get it based purely on that fact that it was being hosted in Thailand. But then once they announced that I was the winner, I was just like relieved. Because not only did I win and, you know, it was an unreal feeling, but it was two months of working hard, uh, you know, during the Thai pageant as well, because it was one month and a half. Mm -hmm. And then five days after I won the Taiwan, I went straight into the, the international pageant. So it was really tough on me, <laughs> you know, energy wise, I was slowly going down, but I had to like, come on, come on, come on. You've got like one week to go, one week to go, come on, you can do this. Yeah. So yeah, I was just constantly motivating myself. So I think it was kind of a relief hearing my name called out, hearing my country called out. And, you know, I did it for the Thai people and being the first male Grand Slam winner for Thailand, it was also an honor. So yeah, I couldn't be happier. And all my parents were very very happy with me and yeah i hope i made them proud <laughs> i'm sure you did, I'm sure you did. <laughs> which also congratulations i yeah. mean truly amazing thank you thank yeah. you yeah. <laughs> you know i never thought i would win i, I never thought I'd, honestly two months prior to joining the pageant i didn't even think i was going to join a pageant at all oh, yeah. i was declining the opportunity for a whole year the the organizer the nd the national director kept asking me kim you should come you should come and i was like no 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 thanks no thanks <laughs> yeah. talk to my manager talk to my manager but in the end i was like you know there's nothing to lose and i gave it a go and here we are yeah and they just gained everything <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah it took a turn for the better yeah yeah I think it's actually really cool to know that, uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily your intention to go into it at the beginning, because I think mm -hmm. that for a lot of people, maybe we might have things that we want to do, but we struggle at the starting point, right? And so yeah. I think that maybe, maybe the lesson here is just do, because you never know where these opportunities and decisions will take you, right? Exactly, exactly. I think that's a big, big lesson I took from uh, taking part in the pageant. You know, you always have assumptions on many, many different things in the world, you know, whether it's going to be good. But then if you just 
sitting there worrying about whether it's going to go well or whether it's going to go down south, uh, you're not going to go anywhere. It's just you got to go ahead, do it. And then eventually life will take you down a road that leads you to success. Ah, words of wisdom. Yeah. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I do feel like we're kind of like on that road right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fun journey. But yeah, yeah. you do have to start. It's tough, <laughs> but you do have to part, start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone has to start somewhere. But, you know, it, consistency is key and well, the effort is what counts. So what are your career goals then? Do you have anything <laughs> that you're like working towards right now? <laughs> Um, well, He's like a I'm in contention for a TV <laughs> series. Uh, yeah, the rock star as well. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, funny thing, I actually had a friend. Uh, we used to be in a band together and he went to study in Berkeley in America. Okay. Um, and he recently came back and I said, Kim, if you want to do music, let me know. I'll, I'll write you a song. Oh. And then you can like play drums and you'll sing it and then you'll release it. And then I was like, you know what? That's very tempting. <laughs> <laughs> it's so tempting. I mean, what have we learned from Mr. International? Yes. Don't you don't have to say no. Just try. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows? That might be under work we'll sometime happens. soon. But um, also, I'm in contention for a TV series, hopefully ready to be filmed during the middle of the year. Wow. And so I've heard. I feel you linger in the air. Is there's going to be a season two? So we'll see if Mr. James makes a return. In mm. one form or another. <laughs> Who do I write we'll a letter see. to? Yeah, <laughs> right. I need it. I think I think the fans just need to be loud enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, do a hashtag on Twitter or something. Yeah, <laughs> you definitely see me. Yeah. Um. So that's underworks. I've heard, and uh, currently just basically doing the duties of Mister International. Um. Because. Uh, within September, I think I'm going to have to pass it on to the next person. So I think there's going to be a little bit of traveling in the next coming months and uh, yeah, just enjoying the moment and doing anything I can at the moment, really. Yeah. What do the duties of Mr. International include? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, pageantry, there's this correlation of, you know, doing social work and also once you've won a pageant, you have to go to different other pageants many many other pageants whether it's like you know national pageants or global pageants to be judges or commentators or hosts so you know that's just some of the duties of a pageant king or queen really mm -hmm. oh, yeah. okay. that's so cool yeah <laughs> yeah that's so neat i feel that i know very little about pageantry uh so you're painting a picture for me. It's really cool. That's a, that is a lot, though. I could imagine you having to travel a lot and prepare for a lot. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of traveling, which usually I don't really get get to travel at all. But this is an incredible opportunity for me, and uh, I'm I've got my fingers crossed that I'm going to get to go to the Dominican Republic really, really soon, and obviously Asia. I'm probably going to get to go anyways, but I want to head over to the Americas. You know, I'm like, yeah. I'm telling my manager, can I please go to like Brazil, Peru, and like Dominican Republic? Because <laughs> uh, I've never been yet. And, you know, it's just an incredible opportunity to even get the chance or the sniff of getting to go, you know. So yeah. it's so close. I just need that <laughs> like, yeah. nudge, you know. That's so <laughs> like, please, please. <laughs> So Please funny. just get me there. I'll pay, I'll pay for my own ticket. Just get me there. <laughs> Your parents are like, if you became a pilot, we could do it with you. <laughs> you would sell with being a pilot. <laughs> yeah, back to being a pilot. <laughs> oh, that's so exciting, though. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I just got to say that pageantry is a whole new landscape. I, w I, I didn't know how big it was. They've got a They've got their own fan base and people are crazy for pageantry all around the world, especially in Asia as well. I think it's got a similar trend to BLs because uh, from what I saw, being part of a BL and in pageantry at the same time, the BL like uh, community don't really watch pageantry, whereas pageantry people don't really watch BLs. But then there's this small group that watch <laughs> Yeah, and they're the ones who are like, wait, Wait, <laughs> that's that you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's exactly like that. Wait, this guy's 
oh wait and they put the two together and then he's like oh okay this guy and then their mind just blown like, oh it's merging <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so um yeah i think you know once you're into pageantry it's kind of difficult to get out because i i wasn't in pageantry at all and i didn't really understand pageantry and why people enjoyed watching it but then once I was part of one myself and once I started watching other pageants uh, I love the Q&A sections so because you know people get to use their brains <laughs> uh, and yeah that's literally the only part I I wait to watch mm. but yeah um, people do love their pageantries yeah oh, super exciting okay my <laughs> My next question, though, I do have to look at my uh, my paper because there's a list. <laughs> Is it hard to balance a career uh, when you are an actor, model, rugby player, Mr. International, and tech consultant? Future rock star. <laughs> Future rock star. <laughs> maybe a pilot. I mean, I got to say, I think I've dropped the role of being a tech consult <sighs> now because, you know, I don't really have the time, no time. for it. But <laughs> yeah, there's no time for it. But uh, actor, model, rugby player, mm, I think I've also retired now, sadly. Yeah, but I still do play socially, but uh, not professionally anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it's now I'm just really focusing myself in the entertainment industry. But prior to this, I was juggling, you know, being a student, working in the industry and also a rugby player. So I think the key is just making sure you've got the time for everything. Mm -hmm. Schedule Scheduling everything is very, very important and making sure that you have the energy every day to do those tasks and fulfill whatever you want to do. Because, you know, uh, burnouts are very, very common with people nowadays as well, just putting too much, expecting too much. And I think it's just, you know, really really thinking about what you can do what you want to do as well because sometimes juggling all these things but not becoming successful in any of them is not what you want to do right yeah. uh, I was actually told by someone I know who uh, he's like manager or senior at one of the big firms in Germany uh, mm -hmm. he's Thai but uh, we were having a discussion and he was like maybe you should try focusing on one thing because a master of one is better than a master of none right mm. uh so i was debating about myself and you know what i've been doing but then i was like i can't focus on just one thing because i've been raised being like a jack of all trades or some kind something like that right so i was like i can't just throw away and focus on one thing so i've reduced on the amount of things I'm doing right now but you know I, I try to make it manageable and try to put 100% in everything that I do yeah I think I mean it is exciting but I think also going forward uh it's going to be really exciting just following your career I feel like you already have accomplished many great things so but I see <laughs> just even more in the future so I'm looking forward to kind of just following your path and cheering for you <laughs> thank you thanks Kim all righty so jumping into acting mm. um mm -hmm. what is it about acting in particular that calls to you yeah like did you just fall into uh, it something that you really want to pursue in your little entertainment bubble I mean now yes it is something that I really want to pursue because I absolutely enjoy it and uh, I think it came to me when I was in school, when I was in high school, because I took drama lessons. Uh, and it was this kind of like in America. I'm not sure. Wait, I'm not sure if you guys have the AP curriculum. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have something called IGCSEs. And uh, basically, we have yeah many, many different classes that you can select. And drama was one of them. It's not only practical, but also theoretical. So... I took drama as one of my courses for IGCSEs and that kind of delved me into acting mm -hmm. and, you know, more abstract types of acting. And then I really, really enjoyed it. And I also thought, you know, the theoretical side of it was also fascinating as well. So that's when I really had that spark. Mm -hmm. And prior to that, I did, you know, theatre at school and stuff. But then I thought, you know, this could be something that maybe I could pursue in the in the future if given the chance yeah. <laughs> so 
yeah, the chance suddenly came. And then I was like, I'm going to take it with both hands <laughs> yeah, and not let go. <laughs> <laughs> so for, um, for like future roles, I guess, what type of, mm -hmm. what type of roles would you want to pursue? Do you, have you thought about that? I mean, I want to act. yes, I have. Oh. One of my dreams is to be part of like a horror movie or a thriller. <laughs> yeah. Because I think acting in a horror or thriller, you really have to be in character and you have to really, wow. really react to the situation going around you. And I think that's going to be a huge challenge. But mm. if I do a good job, it's going to be a good movie or a series or whatever, you know, production it's going to be. Yeah, so that's one of my dream goals. And obviously, I think action, you know, being a leading action star, that would be you know, a huge role as well. But in Thailand, there's not many action films. So that's a shame. Maybe I need to go abroad for that. Oh. Given, the given the chance. Always cross fingers. <laughs> yeah. It's like the interview of cross fingers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> for the horror, just out of curiosity, would you like to be mm -hmm. the person imposing the chaos or the someone victim? that it's happening to? Mm. Imposing the chaos. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I, I just like it is pretty common. I think, uh, especially these days, because there have been so many cool series that have come out that have kind of like these psychological thriller aspects to them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah like being able to play that. Yeah, I can totally see the appeal. Yeah, just gotta keep working hard towards the goal, right? You're gonna get there. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> jumping back to, I feel you linger in mm -hmm. the air. Mm -hmm. Wait, day <laughs> it's probably been so long now <laughs> were there any like really mm -hmm. funny behind the scenes moments that you can recall and share oh wait 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 wait, wait. yes 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 there, there are a few but ah i can't remember that there were a few there were a few but ah uh, it's just got out of my mind uh, I, I need to recall them a bit so maybe it'll come back later on if we okay. just continue okay <laughs> we'll come back um are there any projects outside of like film projects that uh both us and like your fans we should all keep an out like an eye out for so we can support you i mean i think uh my social media you know if mm. you guys follow my social media i'll regularly be updating that but mm maybe sometime soon there's gonna be some music coming out so cross fingers on that because uh i've been in talks with my friend now and uh we're probably going to be working on something very very soon and that's about it at the moment there are other things in the works but i just want to keep my mouth shut for now before i spoil and you know absolutely ruin my own plans <laughs> understandable because if i say it then i have to do it right if yeah. i don't say it then you know if it doesn't work then that's fine so i'm just trying to keep myself safe that's all <laughs> So out of curiosity, sorry, about music, your friend, um, are they a composer or uh would they be performing with you? I'm just I'm genuinely curious. This is it's really fun. Uh he is a composer, but he's also a singer, songwriter, and a musician as well. So yeah. he's actually teaching in New York at the moment, a master's program, and he's two years younger than me. So that wow. just shows you how good he is. Wow. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. 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 I actually really love uh, talking with um, with actors about their experiences in music because I mm -hmm. did music when I was younger, so I played clarinet, but I actually did percussion for a few years too. We did like percussion ensemble, which I feel like doesn't really exist everywhere. Mm -hmm. But um, but anyways, I get really excited because I feel like uh, I'm living vicariously through everyone else <laughs> going forward there. Mm. Yeah, because uh, I think everybody wants wanted or actually did mu music when they were younger at school or whatnot so I think everybody had that dream of you know what if I pursued this route would it lead to becoming a musician professional am I going to be famous rock star yeah. so you know it started from somewhere and I think you know acting or becoming you know a celebrity it kind of opens that door for you if you do want to take that chance and that's what we see with many many of the be our lead actors that actually get to do concerts and you know start producing music and it's really catching on as well yeah, yeah so yeah. you know who knows anything can happen yeah 
I'm so excited. I feel like there's so much to look forward to. <laughs> it is, like, yeah. Sorry, I was just like yeah. remembering, like you said you want to be a rock star. Because I was going to ask, like, what genre of music would you go to? Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good. I actually, I, it's interesting because I've noticed like with BL lead actors, like when they're put into the music industry, it's usually like the pop, T-pop type mm. music. Mm, yeah. You don't really, I feel like it's, I've had a, I guess through my limited scope, I've kind of struggled to find um, music that kind of breaks out of the T-pop mold because I do prefer mm -hmm. more, I don't want to say like hard rock, but more music that has a bit of more of a rock style to it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I just think it's, uh, especially in Thailand, it's less accessible in the mass, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mass media, because people just listen to pop. It's easy to digest and it's easy to produce as well. Whereas rock, um, not everyone's going to like it, especially if it's too hard. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be like, oh, this bunch of noise going on <laughs> Ooh, <do you laughs> with the any... distortion guitars. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, do you have any bands that you could recommend? Oh, yeah. Ooh. So we, I mean, honestly, we we love Thai music. I feel like we listen to Thai music all the time. So we're always looking for new artists. Thai artists? Mm. I think... Like, I guess it doesn't mm. specifically have to be Thai. But... Um, I mean... Who's on Kim's currently... playlist? <laughs> <laughs> Rock music? I listen to a lot of Royal Blood. Uh, I think they're mm. a great band. Royal Blood, they're a two-piece band. They're a little bit you know, heavy rock, but um, English band, they're very, very good. Muse. Um, and then if you want to do something more, you know, easier to digest, you know, Paramore uh, mm -hmm. and bands like, what are they called? Oh, what are they called? Uh, you know, Green Day, stuff like that. They're, they're easy oh, to yeah, digest. Pop, um... They're more like punk, rock punk. Mm -hmm. uh, Blink 182. And obviously, if you want to go to the classic rock side, Guns N' Roses, Bon Jovi, those guys never disappoint. Never, <laughs> never, never, never. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just remembered the story about uh, I Feel You Linger in there. Okay. So, yeah. When, when, we, when we were on set, uh, we actually have a lot of downtime waiting in between sets and them changing the sets and everybody doing makeup and uh, getting their costumes ready. So every single day we're on set, Nongun, uh, he brings board games. <laughs> it's like really and he's always the one to instigate the games he's like guys guys let's come and play like let's play splyfall let's play um so exploding cute. kittens <laughs> and we're just like okay and then half like of we us will not be bored play. today yeah yeah it's like no we gotta do something we can't just sit there on our phones we gotta play we gotta play so we all turn up in like a huge circle and start playing and then there was one time we were playing werewolf or like avalon okay and then it's funny because we're all amongst actors ourselves, and then everyone Wait. was acting so bad. <laughs> <laughs> really? It was just like they, they didn't understand the game enough to know what to do. So it was just like I'm 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 the thief. So it's like everyone was just like when the thief, they're just like very, very like <laughs> nervous. And then I, I just like I was like, I can see you being nervous. I was like, I know you're the thief. So yeah, um, it was just so funny. It was like, I can't believe I'm a actors. <laughs> Games not to play with actors. <laughs> That's so funny, actually. <laughs> Because you expect actors to be good at acting. And, you know, when we're playing board games, it's like, you know, poker face. Or they act like, okay, i, I got to be fair, fair with you. Nonkun, he's an expert. And he's absolutely amazing with all the board games. But then there are the other actors who didn't really know the rules. Yeah, they're, no. <laughs> they're like, I didn't have so time funny. to method act. Being the thief. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel it. <laughs> Yeah, I need to read the script and understand the character. <laughs> understand the character. <laughs> What's yeah, my no, motivation? Really yeah, yeah. But actually, that was an experience, you know, actually playing with actors. And those yeah. who actually knew how to play, oh, they were tough to actually pick out. Yeah. So yeah. what types of board games, I, I'm wondering, are they ones I've heard of? 
Yeah, uh, so Avalon, uh, it's mm -hmm. more like a card game, but I think they put put it into the board game ca category. Mm -hmm. uh, Werewolf, uh, Uno, we played Uno. Uh, oh, many, many different things. But I think it's usually like a group games rather than, you know, four to five people because we had 10 people on set each day. So yeah, it would be games like Werewolf where everyone could join in. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask who's the most competitive? Just out of curiosity. <laughs> uh, non kun or either me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I brought these to win. <laughs> oh, actually, Attila. Attila was very, very competitive whenever he played, but he didn't play every time. But whenever he joined, he was like, no, no, you can't do this. You. And he's always the one accusing me of being the, the wolf. And I was like, why are you accusing me? Just because we're like both like halfies doesn't mean you have to accuse me. <laughs> That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> I never would have thought yeah. that. It's always so fun to hear about stories behind the scenes. Oh, I've I've never heard of anyone playing board games before or games. That, that is a good idea. Like, yeah, that's so smart. But actually, it's such a fun yeah. visual too. Did he own all yeah, these games, or was he just buying new games every day to bring in? I think he has like a huge bunch of games at home and then he's just like, okay, pick out one to take to set today. And I actually saw that he had like three games each time he's on set because he has a manager and I think his manager like prepares them for, for him. <laughs> and he's like, you know, there's many different games, there's like a card game, there's like a proper board game and then there's another one. And I was like, oh my God, you're prepared. <laughs> That's so fun. We have options. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, what, what do you feel like playing, right? <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. That is genuinely so fun. Oh, God. Well, thank you for okay. sharing that yeah. with us. <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. That was a great now, time. You know, if there is a, you know, if season two does come around, we're just going to be thinking about this all the time. <laughs> what game did they play before yeah. the scene? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's probably going to be like 80% of the time Werewolf or Avalon. So. <laughs> <laughs> Practicing our acting skills. Because yeah, like... <laughs> it's like in time for season two. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. gosh. All right. Well, that was um, the end of our <laughs> questions. That was <laughs> all of it. That was such a good ending. <laughs> <laughs> oh, any well, questions? Guess, any other uh, questions that guess... popped up? Any in closing, actually, is there anything mm. that you would like to say to your fans, yeah. your international fans? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I just got to say, I'm incredibly overwhelmed by all the support that I've gotten, you know, whether that's through being part of I Feel You Linger in the Air, Bad Buddy, or even Mr. International. I really, really appreciate all the support and all the supportive messages that I get uh, on a daily, um, you know. I can't be here without you guys and you know you guys are also a reason behind why I strive to actually you know take part in all these projects and keep on producing content and movies and series for you guys to enjoy so you know uh, hopefully I get to see all of you one day whether wherever you are you know in America in Brazil uh, Japan Korea um, but yeah Dominican Republic <laughs> Dominican Republic yeah Peru <laughs> Maybe I'll just name all the countries in the world. <laughs> no, no, I'll save you the time. I'll save you the evening. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully I'll get to see all of you one day and actually thank you guys in person. Yay. Yay. <laughs> one more finger crossing. <laughs> You're hopeful, hopeful. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This was so much fun. I'm so glad we had the opportunity to learn more about you and uh, things to look forward to in the future. So yeah. excited. Mm. And fans, you know, if, if we want to see him in I Feel You Linger in the Air season two, <laughs> we got to speak up. <laughs> got to work. <laughs> there you go, guys. But you guys got to say thank you for having me on your program today. You know, it's been an honor to be part of this. And thank you for your time as well. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much yes thank you and to everyone watching we will see you next time see you next time bye